Hey there, this is Jonathan, and in the following tutorial, we are going to draw a Batman logo using Illustrator. And we're going to use a couple different techniques. So the first step you need to do is look for the Batman logo in images in Google and try and find the one that's up here in the top. Now, I like this particular one. One of the reasons why is because it's a PNG with transparency, and that's actually going to matter in just a second. Before we do anything, let's go over to Illustrator and make a new document. Document. For this document, I'm actually going to use the web profile and use this common size. One of the reasons why is because it's a really simple way of creating a new document. And the other thing that's nice about it is that since it's widescreen, it will fit this logo quite well. I'm also going to just zoom out just a tiny bit with the alt and a mouse wheel. And if you want, what you can do is you can put that into the center. You can do control one or control zero and control zero will fit the screen um, to your current view, which is great. And that way it's nice and centered and everything else. Um, now we're going to go back to our Batman logo and you might be tempted to think, well, you can just copy and paste this image from online into Illustrator. So if I choose copy image, go over to Illustrator and then paste, what you'll see is that you get a just big black box. And the reason why is because Illustrator does not recognize transparency in PNGs when you copy and paste from online. So instead, what you have to do is you have to download the image and then place it. So let's right click, choose save image as, and then save the image into your folder. I've already got an image that I've downloaded. And so here it is. Now we can click and drag that down to our Illustrator icon, drag it back up and drop it. And that places the file just fine. Now, if you want to, you can try and find the center of your um, document or another great way of centering this real quickly is if you go to align to artboard at the top, then you can align it to the center and to the center. And if this was off from the center, let me move it away from the center. You'll see aligning it to the center and to the center there has aligned it to the artboard very, very easily. And that's a really nice feature to do. Now, an alternate way of placing this is to go to file um, place. Here it is. And then find the file that you want to place, which is down here and then bring it in. If I hit place, then you'll see I have the ability to click and, and put it in, or I can click and drag and I can place it at a particular size. So just kind of nice way, um, another way of doing it. Um, I'd rather just click though, because I want it to kind of fill this thing as much as possible. Okay, once it's in here, we do want to do something else. And let's go to our layers real quick. This is actually going to be a template layer because we don't want it to print. And actually, before I do that, I do need to do one more thing. Click on it and you'll see here at the top, this is actually linked to that file. And we can tell that it's linked because of the crossbar, the X that we see in here. And we actually want to embed it. So you want to click on embed real quick. Now we can go on. Um, with our layer, double click on the icon for layer one and change it to a template. What this will do is dim the image and now it will make it so if you were to print this document, you wouldn't be able to see this particular logo, which is great. Now, before I draw, I do want to set up a couple other things. One of the main things that I want to get is a center line for this logo. So I know when I draw things where that center is going to be. So I'm gonna zoom up just a little bit and I wanna see right there. And, and what I need to do is drag out something from the ruler to this, but I can't see the ruler yet. So we're going to right click, show the rulers. And if you try and drag out, you'll notice that I'm getting this pencil with um, a slash in it. The problem is, is that this is a single layer and it's locked. I can't add anything to it. So what we really need to do is create a new layer first. Now you'll see that I get my normal pen tool or my normal arrow tool. And now I can click and drag that guide out to the center of that line. Zoom out a little bit and you'll see that we're there. Now, another thing that I can do is I can actually add other ones. So I can add one to that. I can add one to the outer edge and it's just helpful for us to know where those things are. I'm not gonna worry about other ones at this point though.
All right, now that we have those simple lines, um, I know that I'm going to do a couple copies of this. So I want to go to my artboards and I'm going to make a duplicate of this artboard next to it so that um, I can then do it again. If I go to artboards, if you just press on the, the new, you'll notice that all it does is create a new artboard next to it. It doesn't copy over the, the content. So I'm going to do control Z to undo that. Instead, I might go over to the menu and duplicate the artboard. Well, it still does the same thing. And duplicate artboards are excellent because you can copy information from one artboard to another. However, you can't do it when the layer is locked. So you have to unlock the layer one, which is the Batman logo, go to your artboard, duplicate it, and I'm gonna duplicate it twice. Then go back to your layer one and lock it. That way you've made a duplicate of your layers, but you haven't um, you haven't changed anything. You've and you've got all the content, I guess, but you still have templates and all that. Okay. Anyway, let's go on with the first one. Now, one way of doing the um, the Batman logo is to use the shape builder tool. And so let's try that real quick. By using the shape builder tool, I might be able to draw a rectangle that would come out to be the size of this Batman. And one of the things about this rectangle is it might be important to go ahead and give it a nice, strong color for the stroke, but take away the fill so you can see through the object to what's below. After you've drawn a rectangle, you'll see it's not absolutely perfect, so I might snap it to that. Then we're going to go and draw an ellipse. And I want to draw an ellipse that kind of fits right in here. And if it's not great, then what we have to do is, after we've drawn it, go ahead and modify it until it kind of fits that shape as much as possible. You might even have to distort it just a little bit. You can rotate it. And let's just say that we get close enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, although that's pretty bad. How about there? That looks a little bit closer. There we go. Now the next one, I'm going to duplicate this by alt dragging that particular one, and I'm going to stretch it out until it kind of fits that guy. Once again, it's not perfect, but it's close enough for the tutorial. Now we need to go to the top part. Now with the top part up here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly just draw a couple shapes. So I can go to the pen tool or even the curvature tool. I really like the curvature tool and it's very easy to use. You want to alt click when you want to create a sharp point and then just click when you want a curved point. So I can just curve this around and then right here at the end, I want to press alt click. Then I'm going to go alt click here, alt click, alt click, and then alt click, go straight up, alt click, and then out here you can just click to select it. Now you'll notice this one right here isn't perfect, so I could drag that up a little bit, I could drag that out a little bit, and you'll see that I can actually get very, very accurate to that path by using um, the curvature tool. And it's really, really a nice tool. Anyway, the last thing that we need, um, let's see, I think that's really it because we have the part, the shape on the top, we have a rectangle that's there, and then we have these two overlapping circles. So we're gonna select all of that and notice that it doesn't select the Batman underneath. That's because it's a locked um, layer. And now what I'm gonna go over to the shape builder and remove the shapes that I don't want using the alt drag method. You could also click on it with the alt key. And what we've left behind is something that we can fill. So I'll switch to my fill color and click once and you'll see I now have a pink Batman, which is perfect. Maybe I might wanna make him a red Batman though. So let's uh, switch to a different color, change him to a red Batman. There you go. Now. Turn off the visibility of your background 
and you'll see what we've been left with. We're not absolutely 100% accurate, but it's close enough. Once we've drawn one half of the Batman, we can actually duplicate this to the other half very easily. The way you do that is go to the Reflect tool. And right now you'll see a little dot in the center right here. And that's the center of this object. And that's actually where it's going to reflect from, which is not where we want it right now. Instead, I'm going to click on the path on the right hand side and then start to click and drag and you'll notice that we are making a copy on the other side but don't let go of the mouse the problem with it is that it, you without holding down a modifier key you can't get accurate so you have to hold down the shift key and then you'll notice that it's going to duplicate to the other side um, or it's going to duplicate when we also press the alt key so with the alt and shift key held down then you let go of the mouse and you've duplicated that um, Batman to the other side. Now let's select both sides using the black arrow and then go to your Pathfinder tool and use Unite so that it is now combined into a single Batman object. And that's really, really cool. Now for the next one, let's turn it back on. We're gonna try doing this one with the um, shape, let's see what's that thing called again. It's called the uh, curvature tool. And this is a great thing you can do. Just go ahead and do click, alt click, alt click, alt click, alt click. And we're just gonna go around and then click on the curves. Just all you have to do is click. So it looks like I might need one more. And then anytime you have a, a um, straight edge, you alt click, alt click, click, back a little bit, click, alt click, click, click. We'll do an alt click at the end. Well, it looks like I might need another one, so I'll click here and then alt click and then join that back up to the top. Now, I'm not even concerned about the fact that um, this one has a curve because if you had a straight line, it's kind of hard to get it to be perfectly, um, let's say, uh, aligned with each other when you try and duplicate it to the other side. It's actually good to have a little bit of overlap. Anyway, before you um, go ahead and go to the next step, go ahead and re adjust your curves when you need to. You can always add a new curve with the curvature tool anywhere that you want. And of course, I would also suggest that you take off the fill if you can't see your background very well. You'll see right here, it's a little off. So I'm gonna alt click right there. And that makes that a curve um, or a sharp point. And it looks like I've made my curve pretty well, but I'm actually gonna click and drag that out just so that I do have it not um, perfectly aligned, you know, like a straight line, because I do want the overlap when I flip it around to the other side. So it looks like I'm pretty accurate on my drawing. So let's go now over to the reflect tool. I'm going to alt, I'm going to click actually on the anchor at the top, and that's now aligned a little light blue there right on that anchor point. And now with the shift key held down, I click and drag and press the Alt key as well, and I get both sides. Now you select both with the black arrow, go to your shape mode, and you can see the overlap that I have there, and let's unite that. And we should now be able to change our fill and stroke color. And we have a pink one again, so I might make it red. And you can see we have a finished Batman. Looks very much like the other one, but it was actually even more accurate because we redrew it. On this last one, here's the technique I want you to use. I want you to use the actual pen tool and see if you can get a little bit more accurate that way. So on this one, I can even get a straight line going right down by holding down the shift key. And now I'm making sure that I'm across that straight. I can go ahead and mimic that curve with the pen tool. It's a little bit harder because once you've drawn this, then you do have to go back and adjust your curves. And once again, you might want to go ahead and switch your fill and stroke color. 
So go around the rest of your object. I'll do it fairly quick. I'm not going to worry about being too accurate. But that should be the end of my object. I've got a little bit here that I probably should adjust just to make that a little bit more accurate. But you can see I can maybe draw it with a few less points. And now what we're going to do is go back to it. Let's fill it real quick. Go to the Reflect tool. Click on the edge or that point at the top with the... With I always press down the Alt key, but you can just click on it once and then click and drag holding down the Shift and the Alt to duplicate it to the other side. Then select both sides with a black arrow and use the Pathfinder Unite to make it a simple shape. And that's basically it. A few different techniques to be able to draw a Batman logo. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Do save your work at this point. I'm um, putting your name on the file, and that's it. Thanks.